Welcome, everyone. I <clears throat> uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak with you today on uh, the best practices for optimizing uh, dose escalation studies in first and human. Uh, so, uh, next slide. Today, uh, what we'd like to do is uh, give you a brief introduction and, and kind of set the context for today's uh, webinar. And then uh, we'll uh, turn the presentation over to um, uh, Dr. Mant, uh, who will cover some of the clinical considerations uh, in uh, both the study design as well as uh, uh, development of the protocol and execution <coughs> of the first in uh, human studies. And then uh, I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, PKPD modeling and simulation and how we can really you know, start to make the most out of uh, the data that is collected uh, in these studies. Uh, following that, we will have a question and answer session and uh, really look forward to um, uh, the discussion today. Next slide. So when we think about uh, early clinical development, uh, there's a lot that really goes into um, putting these types of um, early clinical studies together. <clears throat> and it kind of starts out with um, a number of different uh, components. Uh, the first being uh, you want to have like a, a clinical pharmacology unit uh, because these uh, studies are um, uh, fairly tedious. Uh, likewise, we're going to need to see, you know, do we need uh, subjects or uh, some patient recruitment um, and, and how we're going to go about that. Uh, likewise, we need our uh, scientific operations uh, and that group is going to be uh, helping us put together uh, the analyses. Uh, model-based drug development group uh, is uh, how do we do the modeling and simulation to really optimize uh, the, the different types of study design. Uh, and then we also have uh, labs and uh, cardiac safety uh, groups that are also interacting uh, that really, you know, bring all different components uh, together to really effectively uh, execute these types of uh, studies. Next slide. So when we think about uh, the circumstances where pharma finds itself today, uh, we know that you know pipeline pressures have started uh, and then really intensified uh, the demand for speed and productivity. And so companies are always looking for uh, improved and faster decision-making approaches about which compounds to take forward. And what this results in is uh, really requiring better early phase studies that deliver um, you know, the best uh, data and insights uh, so that those decisions uh, can be made for, a, uh, in essence, a successful um, portfolio. But uh, you know, the question is, how do we get there? And there's definitely a need for novel approaches to identify uh, investigational drugs viability. Uh, identify the risk and uh, increase the compound knowledge so that we are making the most of the collected data and then getting to you know, a really better go, no go decision. Next slide. <clears throat> um, but while we're you know, looking to accomplish this optimization, uh, we still have to make sure that we're uh, maintaining uh, safety. Uh, that our efficiency, you know, is there. Likewise, that um, we're able to um, maintain uh, the quality of the uh, the data that we're uh, generating. So, and likewise, doing all this without really compromising patient safety. So, I hope that kind of sets the stage for um, uh, the the talk for today. And uh, what we're going to do now is, I think, start off with a quick polling question. So, Michelle, I'll turn it back over to you. Yep, thank you for that, Seth. Uh, we do have a polling question at this section, and I'm launching it on the screen right now. Uh, at this point, uh, the audience can vote uh, on the question in real time just by clicking on your screen. And the question we have for today is, when performing dose escalation, what is the biggest challenge on dose selection between cohorts? Your options are a safety concern, toxicity, toxicity threshold, or tolerability, uh, pharmacokinetic predictability of concentrations uh, or exposures, separating exposures to observe a difference in response, 
formulation availability or other? And I'll give the audience a few seconds just to vote on that. And again, the question is, when performing dose escalation, what is the biggest challenge on dose selection between cohorts? And just a few more seconds. OK, I'll be closing the poll right now. Looks like most of the audience has voted. And here we can see the results um, being 63% for safety concerns slash toxicity threshold and tolerability, 22% for pharmacokinetic predictability of concentrations, exposures, 11% for separating exposures to observe a difference in response, 2% uh, for formulation availability, and 2% for other. And with that, I'll just hand the mic back to you, Seth. So that uh, definitely uh, is what we would have anticipated as far as like uh, safety problem being the, the key uh, driver uh, for these studies, but uh, we'll go in and we'll explore a little bit about each one of um, uh, those uh, issues in today's webinar. So with that, <clears throat> um, we'll go ahead and head in advance to uh, Tim's presentation uh, on the clinical considerations for um, the dose escalation studies. Tim? <laughs>